for today's webinar, Empowering Small Businesses with AI, Four Strategies for Building Lasting Customer Connections. How many of us today attending the webinar and watching feel that we have great customer relationships, great customer connections? Let me know in the chat box if you think you do, if you have experience, and also share those experiences in the chat box if you can. Hi, Rebecca. Okay, so today we have one, a stacked agenda. It's gonna be great, but I really wanna welcome you all here. And I think about this quite often. And this is when I was working in retail in high school and then worked in a restaurant and then as a bartender and then became a bar manager like while in college, helping put myself through school. Um, but it actually is, and I feel like y'all know this, so maybe I'm behind, maybe you're ahead. But did you know that actually acquiring new customers can be up to 25 times more expensive than retaining an existing one? How many of us knew that or feel like we've heard something similar to that? Let me know in the chat box if you have, or if you've seen, or if you've heard of that, or you've heard something similar, put that in the chat box as well. This is your time, your 45 minutes to engage and network as well. So in today's competitive market, we're really gonna be focusing on, and what it is focused on, is on customer retention. That's it. It's key. It's very key because it's going to be helpful for sustainable growth and success. So let's explore not only how AI can help us, we'll learn about that in the end, but how you personally, as a business owner, as someone that has a stake in your business, can actually help strengthen your customer relationships and actually help drive loyalty. Yes, it's so valuable. We do our best. I love this. Hi, Cynthia from the Bay Area, NorCal. Rebecca rings a bell. Okay. All right, y'all. So we're going to be talking about a lot of different things. And for us in this webinar, not all these points are going to apply to all of us. I want you to take what you need today. So if you see that, mm, I've heard some of this stuff, kick back, relax. You'll get the recording. And when you feel like you need to pay attention, go for it. But I want us to make this your time ask her questions, work through these problems. We're all here together. I want us to use this time as such. So today we're going to be going over how to implement customer retention strategies. After that, we're going to dive into how to manage online reviews, but also leverage that feedback as well. Monica, yes, you're welcome. And build customer loyalty through meaningful experiences. One of my favorite things to actually talk about. And then last but not least, how to leverage AI for personalized customer interactions as well. So we're gonna kick things off, we're gonna jump right in, and we're gonna be talking about how to implement customer retention strategies. How many of us feel like we have customer retention strategies in place? Maybe that's a loyalty program, maybe that's a follow-up after a customer leaves, maybe that's how you get engaged with your customers if they're in your business, maybe that's how you interact with them online. Maybe that's in the comments, maybe that's in reviews. Uh, Tony, I'm sure you are doing a great enough job, and that's what matters. That's why we're here. We're only here to learn a little bit more. The beginning of it, still building. Hey, yes, always can do better. We always can do better. And I want us to make sure that we're not pushing ourselves to do too much. I think there is a way that, yes, we can be doing better as business owners, as entrepreneurs. But we also need to know when to take a step back. And when to also keep ourselves, our health, our mental health and mind as well. If you struggle with that, if you feel like, dang, I need to take a step back. I need to relax. I need to take some time for me. Let me know in the chat box. We have some resources. We have blogs to make sure that you're taking the right steps as a business owner as well. Tony, you're in the right spot. We've got you. All right. We're going to kick things off right now. So implementing customer retention strategies. Right here, you see eight. And we're going to go a little bit deeper than that as well. And according to a study by Harvard Business School, really increasing customer retention rates by just 5%, 5%, while it may seem like, oh, that's nothing to some of us, that's a lot. And it can lead to an increase in profits between 25 to 95%. Now, that's average. That's not everyone's going to be, oh, I'm 95%, I'm going to do this great. You're trying every day, and I think that's all we can do. So give yourself some grace. Give yourself a pat on the back. In a little bit, we're going to actually discuss some practical strategies and tools that you need, that you should want also, to keep your customers coming back for more. So number one, be honest. How many of us feel like we're honest with our customers day in and day out? 
Uh, Timothy, yes. Yes, I'm very excited about how we, yes, exactly. Honesty is key. It is. Honesty is very, very key. No one likes surprises. I sometimes like surprises, but I remember one time my parents surprised me when I was little for a birthday party and I cried apparently. So I'm not the biggest fan of surprise parties, um, but people love surprises, especially when it comes to um, surprises for them. But you know what kind of surprises people don't like? price increases. It happens. It's going to happen. Being transparent and really transparent with your customers about the reasons behind price hikes um, can actually build trust and understanding. Most of the brands that I visit, which are usually small businesses, um, or I'm thrifting clothes, things like that. I am a thrifter. Yes, sometimes I try to be. But really think about this as a business owner, as but even more so as a person. Consider using various communication channels, such as your website, your social, and store signage. Maybe maybe you have bus advertisements or billboards still. You know, use that to, in, to let customers know about your changing, about changes that are coming. Be so transparent with them. They're like, oh, we already knew. We, like, we saw that in the newsletter last week. We saw it on social the day before. No surprises. No one likes surprises, unless they're a good surprise. Right? It's, and I love this. I'm going to say this from Rebecca. Rebecca says, it's so much easier to be honest. Don't have to worry about which story you told to who if you aren't. Exactly. Be honest. It's so it's rewarding. It's rewarding and it's easy. Number two, reinforce the quality, the value of quality and local. I love local businesses. My granddad ran a local business. My uncle ran a local business. I've worked in local businesses. Um, whenever I go back home, I go to my favorite sub shop and they just got online ordering blew my mind when I went home, but it was so much fun. And me and my mom went, we grabbed some lunch, pick, I picked up a sandwich for later on. Cause I love their sandwiches and they had like their, um, Jimmy John, not Jimmy John's. Sorry. That's not, it is called brother John's and they have like their Italian sauce and, but it's like a thicker, like creamy, like homemade Italian sauce they put on their sandwiches. Oh, y'all, it is so good. And they make homemade brownies. And they have like a little section to like where you can come pick up your orders now. Like if you do online ordering and it's, the place has not changed, but the way that they do things have changed. So highlighting the unique aspects, if you will, of your products, your services, what's that local charm can really help you I think as a business to help you justify the higher prices to your customers or the swift changes or things that are coming down the line when you really think about this. Really emphasizing quality, such as being locally made, handmade, or that superior quality can really differentiate your business from larger competitors. But I love this at the same time can showcase the value. And I think we forget that sometimes. We're like, oh, the store is beating us or this is happening at this store. I don't want us to think about that because I think we get too down on ourselves and we start to lose the big picture. Think about the value that you bring to your customers in your area. Maybe you do it nationwide, maybe you do it worldwide, but think about how you make a difference in that customer's life. And if you have some experiences where you feel like you've definitely made a difference, let me know. I'm sorry I'm making you hungry. <laughs> Rebecca, so true. Love this. Y'all are amazing. Yes. Okay. Stephanie, yes. Okay, this is good. Y'all are on it today. Y'all are engaged. Y'all are up. Y'all are awake. I love it. Um, went to the post office and was, yes, I didn't even know that, but that's something I need to make sure I check out next time. Um, and I go to our little floral shop once a week and I get flowers for myself. I'm going tomorrow. So I'll, I wish that I could like send y'all a picture and y'all could see. Because I was like, oh my gosh, did you get the flowers? Yes, I'm getting the flowers tomorrow. Do it every Friday. Just a little like pepping your step, do something good for yourself. Flowers every Friday. It really is one of these, and we'll get back on track. I promise you, <laughs> but one of the local businesses, like where my parents still live in Georgia, um, this little cafe, they do fresh flowers almost every day. And it's from the flower shop, like down the road. And I love that how that's how some businesses in towns and small towns, especially that's how they work together. They are looking out for each other. I don't know if y'all have any businesses in your neighborhoods or your towns that do that as well. But when we think about customer retention strategies, I think one, I don't know if it's listed on here, is working together as local businesses. When, when people see you partnering, when they see you doing things together, 
to me, I'm like, yes, this is one of my favorite places to go. So yay, they're teaming up. Um, one thing that I like seeing businesses do, and sometimes it doesn't have to be like a fancy gift. If your restaurant could be like a cookie, it could be like, it's the little things. It doesn't necessarily have to be a gift. I know we're all strapped on things that we can and cannot do, but think about the little things that you can put in. If you're shipping out products, maybe your cosmetic company, do a handwritten note. If you do services in your service area business, you know, write a note saying, thank you for letting us do business with you. We hope that you will continue to let us um, be, you know, work with you in your home. If you have any questions, please reach us at this. Leave a personal number. Leave like a number that goes straight to your line if you can. Just adding that small token of appreciation with every purchase, with every order. Um, like I said, you don't have to give away the whole milk and cow or the whole house positive note, a memorable experience. That is what these customers, they're going to remember. Yes, they're going to remember negative things that happened too, but also think about like the things that they will remember and the things that have made a difference in your purchasing experience and your habits. So unless they're bad habits, then we don't want to, we don't want to duplicate those. Number four, create unique offers for existing customers. How many of us feel like we do this already for our existing customers right now? We treat them like the cream of the crop. They are our number ones, our die fours. We will do anything for our existing customers. I love this. Yes, I do. Okay, y'all are already ahead of the game. I love this. We're a small local business. I find creating a relationship is always good. They seem to trust you more if you do this. That is true, Timothy, they do. But also it just makes you feel good. I just, I love patronizing the local businesses whenever I visit. Um, whether that's a local restaurant, gift shop, museum, what have you. Create those unique offers that will really um, ignite with your existing customers. And what I like about this is it doesn't have to be anything that's new. It doesn't have to be anything that's flashy. You know, offering exclusive deals or early access, even by a day or 24 hours, y'all, it makes the day, it makes the experience so much more real and so much more that you are... And like this an exclusive club. So definitely think about that, but also build a personal connection. I think this ties in with every step that we're going in. Build a personal connection. One thing that I do when I went this morning to my local spin studio in Austin, Texas, they also have a few locations in Houston. It's called Ride Indoor Cycling. I've been going to them for maybe six years, y'all. And it's nice because everyone not everyone, but most people remember your name and they're like, hey, like you're almost at so many rides or how was class today? It's like the little things that they remember and how they get engaged with you. I'm not saying you have to remember everyone's name. If you can, you're one of those amazing rare people that can do it. You have a gift. I cannot. So build a personal connection. Get to know them. Not in a creepy, like I'm going to stalk you, hang out by your house type of Michael Myers, but we're not going to do that. We are here to build a real personal connection and this is going to be good only for your business, but for building out those personal relationships as well. And I think about this, one of my friends, he's a real estate agent, and he's like, there's really no such thing as like professional relationships. They're all personal relationships. He's like, you don't want to just build a relationship just to build a relationship to get a sale because then you're only building surface level relationships. Get to know them, find something in common with them. Um, and I think that's the thing. If you start to see those repeat customers, those existing customers, build that relationship with them. How many of us do that? Tony, we support handicapped dogs and their parents, but I feel like we could do better for our supporters. You're already doing so much. Um, that you're already, y'all are all doing so much. Oh, I love this. Yes. Okay. Yes. You must keep your customers happy and satisfied, but also be true to yourself. Number six, keep your website up to date always i don't i don't want to get on yelp and then be like okay this is open but only to find out that when i get to your restaurant you're actually closed you haven't updated your yelp but you've updated your website but i didn't see your website because it wasn't connected to your yelp and i know you're probably thinking but jeffrey it just says our website this goes for every single thing that has your name on it online make sure it's consistent across the board this goes back to branding 101 basics Really make sure that your brand is not just your colors and your logo and your font, but it's also about keeping everything up to date. Your customers, they're looking for that information in the moment. They're in their Jeep, they're in their car, they're picking their kids up from school. Um, dad's going to pick up dinner tonight. 
mom is running late from a meeting, you know, or mom's dropping off grandma somewhere, trying to cross paths, or maybe you're doing it on your own. Make sure that when you're in a pinch as a customer, you're making the buying decision. You're literally decide, deciding if I want to spend money here or if I want to spend money over here. Make sure that as a business owner, you think about that too. I want us to, in the future, it could be today, it could be tomorrow, what have you, um, is put yourself in a consumer's shoes. I think most of the time, well, not most, a good portion of the time, let's use that language, a good portion of the time, we are focused in business mode, entrepreneur mindset. Um, I know, Cynthia, like, I'm just like, no, I wanted those mozzarella sticks so bad, but I couldn't get them because it was closed. So think about that. Put yourself in the customer's shoes. If you're going through your website, you're like, this is cool, but from a customer standpoint, does it make sense for this to flow? You know, if if I'm on your Facebook page, I should see all your information there, phone, email, website, what have you. So just making sure everything is consistent across the board, there won't be any problems. My two last favorite two things, sharing customer testimonials. How many of us have reviews on Google, on Yelp, Facebook, any of the social platforms, any platform, raise your hand, let me know. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, y'all. And it's, and it's really interesting to actually see this take on because I love customer service. I've worked in customer service. I, I don't know. It's just something I love engaging with people. I love people. So whenever you get a great customer review, don't let it just sit on your Yelp or Google or Facebook page. Capture that. Use GoDaddy Studio. Put in something pretty. Make it with your colors and your logo and post it on your Facebook page, on your Instagram story, on X now, well, formerly known as Twitter, or, you know, use your reviews as something that's going to be beneficial, not just for your business. Remember, we're out of that business owner mindset. As a consumer, I'm looking at your reviews. They're great reviews. I don't have to go all the way to Yelp to see if I want to go do some business with you. You just highlighted a great review. I can see that. So think about your customers, where they're going to be looking. No longer are we saying, hey, like, what's a good pizza place to go eat at? I'm usually looking on Instagram, like pizza, Austin, Texas. What is it going to pull up? Or I'm going to Yelp, pizza, Austin, Texas. It's going to pull in reviews. And these sites, they're not going to always. Yes, Heather, our recording will be sent out to you as well. And yes, you will be getting the AI section. It's going to be at the end. Like I said, we're going through all of our organic strategies first and at the end, wrapping it up with AI, but also your great, great questions. So, and also create useful content for customers. When you look at your content and you're thinking, okay, like this is funny, this is great. But if it's not getting shares, if it's not getting engagement, I mean, by engagement, I mean comments, the likes, that's a vanity metric. You can, you can pay someone to like your content, but what you can't pay is someone to genuinely engage with your content, to laugh at your Instagram stories, to comment and ask you as a business owner, hey, I really like this product. How can I order this online? Or do you have this in stock in your store? That's what you want. When you've created that full customer connection, that's when you know that you're doing something right. So always make sure that you're creating useful content for your customers to use. Make it educational, make it funny. Really put yourself into it and don't be afraid to try something new. You never know what's going to work for you only until like you try it with your audience and they see it and they like it or they don't focus, focus, focus on your customer experience. I harp on this a lot. And the reason why I do is because when we think about creating that great customer experience, I don't want to say a good customer experience because I know y'all create great customer experiences. You're here, you're in a webinar, you're wanting to learn more, you're wanting to engage with your customers more. You're clearly here for the right reasons. So your good customer service, I don't want to say it's the crucial, crucial part of running a successful business, but it sure does darn help. It does. And these are just like a few stats that I found um, that I think might ring a bell or might make a difference. So according to a study by PwC, 73% 73% of 
of customers point to customer experience as an important factor in their purchasing decisions. How many of us as consumers, let's take off our business hat, put that right there. Let's put on our consumer hat. What are some things that have been an important factor when you choose to do business with a small business? And let us know in the comments. Was it because they were engaging online? Was it something else? Um, oh, I love this. We print our customer reviews big in front of our store. I love that, Timothy. That's something I want us to think about. If we've had a good customer experience, what has been so good about that experience? If we had a negative one, what's been so negative? And what happened there? Let us know in the comments. Let us know in the chat box. Tony, quick response. Great reviews. I love this. Yes. Tony also said, genuinely engage with your content. It's true. Got to genuinely engage with your content always. Now, some things that when we focus on the customer experience, these might be some pain points that as a business owner, you're probably like, dang, that is right. Loss of sales. Poor customer service can lead to direct loss of sales. Negative word of mouth, that one bad thing happened. And it's been a downward hill ever since. You're trying to think of that. Lack of loyalty. Is it because of content? Is it because something happened in person? Something happened online? What happened? So think about these things. And by understanding you know, your pain points, how you can focus on that customer experience for you, and your community and your business, you as a small business owner, you can see the tangible benefits of not only investing and prioritizing customer experience, which I all hope we do after this webinar. It's not just about making customers happy. I don't, we can, uh, anyone can make a customer happy. It's easy. It's about driving business growth and sustainability. And sometimes, yes, we like to say the customer's always right, but sometimes they're not right. And sometimes, you do have to engage with them in a way that you're like, I don't know how to do this. And I think a way that does help in a way that we can get in front of this is by asking for feedback. How many of us ask for feedback? Professionally, personally, let me know. I love getting feedback as a person. <laughs> Great reviews, returns calls or emails quickly. Yes. Yes, y'all. Return those calls, emails quickly. Feedback equals growth. Sharon, yes. One thing I do want us to, I do want to highlight right here is knowing when to respond to your reviews publicly and privately. We're going to go over this in the next section, but I want us to keep that in our mind turning. Um, yes, Rebecca, actually listen to what they have to say. Read through everything. I think that's the biggest thing is as a consumer, I'm guilty of this. You're probably guilty of this. We don't read as consumers half the time. We just don't, we don't read. So that's what your consumers are doing too. They're not reading. So in a way, you know, we're all kind of lost out there. We're just trying to help each other, ask for feedback. And I love this and I did this because, and there's different ways that you can ask for feedback like this. Um, how can you support cafes and restaurants? I love this because you can do this at any time. And I think I love seeing these kind of social posts when you're like, how can you support a restaurant or a small business without, without monetary donations or like giving them money by buying a product or service? Like, like a post, engage on a post, share a post, leave a positive review. Um, I think these are really big things that I think we sometimes forget about as a small business. And these are things that not only help spread positive word of mouth, but it also encourages people to leave feedback and to also get feedback. I'm not saying everyone is going to give 100% positive feedback. That's not going to happen. Excuse me. But by providing customers with an outlet to share their opinions, businesses, you can strengthen your loyalty, but also improve the overall user experience. And I want us to think about that. This webinar is all about building those lasting connections, whether you're on vacation, you're in the business, you're online, what have you. And one, t one key takeaway for small businesses is the importance of embracing both positive and negative feedback as it provides valuable insights for growth, but also demonstrates that you're dedicated to customer satisfaction and the customer experience. And I know some of you are like, oh, reviews are the bane of my existence. Sometimes that is the case. And sometimes people are too quick to respond to reviews. And sometimes we respond in a way that isn't good for our business and our brand. Um, yes, yeah, same thing in the nonprofit world too. Yes, that is very true, especially in the nonprofit world. 
you really, really need to make sure that as a business owner, despite any of the challenges that you've gone up against, besides what you're doing, you're still standing, but prioritizing customer feedback is going to be really helpful for building that loyal customer base, but also at the same time, staying competitive in the market. Sometimes like, if I see that sometimes people are like, the food is horrible, blah, blah, blah. The service is great. I'm going in. That means the food is great. You just had a bad time. So really, really look at how people are being treated. And I think that also says wonders too about your staff. And I love when I read positive reviews. And sometimes every, every business is not going to have perfect five. The average score across social platforms for reviews is a 4.7. So if you're looking for a perfect five, mm-mm. Let it go. Like they say in that movie Frozen, just let it go. And think about your human. Mistakes are going to happen. Just think about how you respond to them and in the way that you respond. And I think that's more powerful than anything. Yes. Okay. I know I kind of spent a lot of time on this first section. We're going to have to kind of hurry it through these other ones. I'm so sorry. So create community through user-generated content. I love this. And we try to practice this at GoDaddy a lot with our social content is we don't have any staff for the volunteers see volunteering i love volunteering sometimes i get too excited probably get too loud but whatever it's always a good time create community through user generated content as a business owner you can't always create content how many of us if we own a business we've seen people use our products eat our food drink our drinks put on our clothing our jewelry um get involved with our services like you said we have volunteers those volunteers might take pictures if they post things about you, they're good. Get people to engage back with you and be like, hey, can we repost this picture? Reposting user-generated content and leveraging user-generated content is super important. But also if you have employees that are taking pictures, also super important too. It just shows the common point for how you can engage both employees and customers and your business together. And one thing that I think about when I think about user-generated content is a pain point for business owners. The time and resources need to curate content. Not everyone is a photographer. We all don't have, you know, picture perfect things that we can take pictures of. So sometimes our customers do a better job than we can. So utilizing user generated content is going to help you save time, but also resources. And I also love this because we can use AI to actually streamline the process by automating the collection and analysis of customer feedback and content. So helping businesses, you as a business owner, engage with your audience more effectively, efficiently, and authentically. Manage online reviews and leverage feedback. We went over this a little bit. Um, we're gonna not breeze. I don't like to like breeze through it. We're not gonna like go fast through it, but we are gonna like go at a brisk pace here. <laughs> As my, when I talked to my dad, he was like, it's brisk out there. He was talking about an Austin that was cold. And I was like, I don't ever hear anyone use brisk, but I'm like, okay. And my granddad, they use the same words. It's wild to me sometimes. But manage your online reviews and leverage feedback. How many of us have left a review before? Positive or negative? I'm not going to ask that you say which one it was, but let me know in the, in the chat box. Oh, Rebecca said several. She was like, several, several, several. Okay, and that's not bad. Leave those reviews. Let us know in the chat box. Yes. Okay, Timothy, all the time sharing. Yes, love this. So my question for you is, why do you need a social media reputation management strategy? Let me know in the chat box. Why do you think we need a social media reputation management strategy? And I think some of us have said it a little bit earlier, but let me know in the chat box, what do you think and why do we need that social media reputation management strategy. To stay relevant. Okay, so dang, right out the gate. I was like, yes. Okay. This is a crucial part of building our business lately, Rebecca. Okay, yes. I love this. Small businesses, solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, one man bands, you've got to prioritize that customer feedback and online reviews. And the reason why I say that is, is because with 76% of customers regularly using and reading online reviews and 46% of them, you're probably thinking, that's a little over half. 46% of them actually trust them as personal recommendations. Businesses, not me to, but you 
I don't want to say have to. I'm going to strongly encourage and recommend that you actively manage this online reputation. I remember my mom always would say this as I'm walking out the house. She's like, don't forget, you're not just representing you. You're representing all of us when you walk out that door. And I'm like, okay, mom. But it's always something that stuck with me. And I want us to think about that as our business. Just because we close our doors, we shut that off button on, we're not online, we're on vacation. Your online business, your business is still running. Your website is still up. People are still commenting on their experiences. They're asking you questions. They're trying to get engaged. By embracing and leveraging customer feedback, engaging with them in comments, your business, you, yes, you that are watching and that are listening right now, you can enhance your online reputation, attract new customers, but also foster loyalty within the community by just engaging with regular feedback. And yes, you're probably thinking, I have a million things to do. This might be a million and one, but it's probably going to be the most powerful one that you can do and a great experience for your customers. I know my mom still says that sometimes, like when I leave, <laughs> like whenever I fly home and I leave, she's like, don't forget it. And I'm like, oh my gosh, Timothy roses are red, but blue. hop on Google and leave us a review. Ah! I love that. That is cute. I love that. I'm going to put a heart on it too. That is nice. I like that. That is so cute. I love that. Steps for consistent reputation management strategy. Screenshot this. You'll get it later in the recording, but assess your own reputation. We went over this in the first section. Everything should be consistent. The name, the colors, the font, the tone, the voice, the language, the punctuation, the address, everything down to the T should be the same across. Monitor company mentions. And this kind of goes back to user generated content, monitoring your reviews, just assessing your reputation as a whole. Set up real-time notifications. You're probably going to be thinking, my brain, or get a system that manages all of your social media platforms in one, what have you. But just by being aware of the inquiries, the concerns, the feedback, the question, you're able to reply promptly and effectively. Not only that, you can create a database of answers. You're probably thinking, but I want to give custom answers. You do. Yes. But you also want to make sure as a business owner, you're saving yourself time. So if you're saying you, let's say you're a restaurant owner, you get a complaint every so often. They're like, I demand a full refund. I want us to not do this. I want us to not go online, respond publicly and saying, yes, next time you come in, tell Susan that I, Gerald, just made up a name. The restaurant owner said that you get 25% off. Well, everyone's seen that review online, right? Everyone's going to start doing that with that one complaint. Just because you complain and you said that you're going to do, be doing this online publicly, everyone is going to ex expect that same type of service. Knowing when to engage proactively and positively. This is important. This is when you decide to respond publicly or privately. And also when it's time to have a phone conversation or invite them back into the business to discuss this or over email. Never, ever. <laughs> um, Never, ever give something away on your business sites because it's just going to create a snowball effect. Um, Tony, if you are already a GoDaddy customer, you should be able to have your dashboard and you can manage everything in one place. Um, I use that personally for my website and the business that I'm building right now. Um, before that, I actually use Sprinkler, which is a great tool to manage all your social media platforms as well. But for my website, and for what I need for my business and how I help clients is through my dashboard. And see, Tony, see you were right there. Everything in your dashboard and you can easily like manage all your social platforms. Actually five as a team. Okay. Truly a business titan. I see you. Okay. Shape your narrative. How many of us feel that we have a story to tell and we want to tell our story or you want people to know us on a deeper level? or to understand us as a business or a business owner, understand our story and where we came from. Not only, does, blah, blah, blah. not only do you want to showcase positive reviews, and not only do you want to make sure you're giving incredible feedback and you're advocating for your employees, but also highlight the positive things that are happening at your business, but experiences of your customers, employees, especially your employees. 
it's always great that like your customers are doing great, but when your employees are doing great, that's like a totally different story. And everyone feels more comfortable and everyone knows that you're treating your business right. So shape your narrative, but also don't be afraid to tell your story. I think business owners that get online and they share truly what's powerful to them. They share what is engaging to them and they share why they started their business and what makes them tick. You're able to sh shape that narrative of your business. You're able to tell your story and really put forth the kind of experience and the kind of things that you want for your business. And this is where your brand identity and all this comes into place as well. Last but not least, take action on feedback and analytics. We've gone over feedback a ton and I am I will continue to as well, but I want that to happen because I want us to learn how to get in the habit of responding to reviews and engaging on a daily, maybe weekly basis if we're not already. And getting that in our minds that these comments, if they're negative, if they're positive, it's just our customers reaching out and this is our chance to engage with them. So whether it's negative or positive, I don't want you to see it that way at all. I want you to see it as this customer's reaching out and they're looking for an interaction. They're looking for engagement. Um, and I think that kind of helps um, put it into a more real perspective. And also so you can respond back as a human and not something robotic. Um, that's one thing I also want us to look at as well. When we're looking at our feedback and analytics, and I'm going to jump to this next page as well, because this comes in handy. When we respond to our reviews, two things I want us to think about. Lemonade out of lemons. Mm. Yes. The one thing I want us to think about is when we're responding to reviews, and this is when AI comes in. Take the review that you got from Yelp, Google, Facebook, what have you. Put it in a chat GPT saying, hey, this happened. I want to respond back to my customer in a professional way. Use a professional but friendly tone um, in how you would respond back to this customer. Yes, you can use AI. One thing that I don't want us to rely on and have to do is that remember AI can't put in human emotions. So this is your chance to put in that humanized emotion into it. Because when you're responding to reviews, we're doing three things, building customer trust and loyalty, improving your online reputation and driving business growth. Three things that we wanna make sure we're doing. And the reason why these three things are so, so, so important is because when we build that customer loyalty, responding to reviews just shows customer that you value their feedback. We just talked about that. There are people just wanting to chat. They're wanting to engage. That's mostly why people get online is to be heard and feel heard. And sometimes, most of the time, it's usually not about what you did. It's something that probably happened earlier in the day. Somebody cut them off in the road. They were late to drop off someone at um, practice. Maybe they got stuck behind a slow driver. Maybe they spilled coffee on their white shirt this morning. So just think about how you can help build trust and loyalty. And this will also help lead to repeat business. Improving your online reputation. You're probably thinking, Jeffrey, okay, reputation. Okay, Joan Jett, we hear you. Improving your online reputation, engaging with these, with these reviews, both positive and negative. I want us to think about that. Oh, and the neutral ones where you just get like stars and you're like, what do I do with this? How do I respond back to this? This also is going to be a proactive approach when you say, hey, thank you for the kind review or thank you for the stars. We really appreciate it. Um, if you could let us know a little bit more what you thought about your experience, we'd be glad to help you. Something along those lines. Nothing too crazy, nothing too fancy. You're not offering them the royal treatment, the red carpet or anything like that. But just showcase your commitment to customer satisfaction. Driving business growth. We all want that business. We all want to make money. But at the end of the day, by responding to your reviews, by you demonstrating to your potential customers that you, y'all, you're actively involved in managing your online presence. I don't want to fall out of the floor. This just this just makes people think like, hmm, they're real. They're real. And then that way they're like, this is not AI behind this responding to reviews. And probably not. You're probably responding back to them. Take the time to respond to those reviews. Rebecca, yes. Okay. Calling this out from what Rebecca said. I use AI as a starting point. Period. Literally. It definitely helps to get into the right mindset. I rewrite to make it my own. That's exactly how you should do it. Love this. Great advice from Rebecca. Y'all give it up for her. Like that. Highlight that. And it's, and it's important. These are things that we should be doing 
to making sure that we're engaging with our customers, but also that we're using AI and we're using it in a responsible way. Okay. I'm, I'm going to ask you these questions and this is like when we can kind of take a breather. I'm going to move on to the next slide in just a second, but feel free to answer these questions. Are you as a business owner, do you struggle with risk? God, if I could read and talk, do you struggle with negative online reviews in your reputation? <coughs> Let us know in the chat box. If you have, how have you gone around that? How have you responded now as you, as a business owner, are you finding it challenging to maintain consistent online presence across your multiple platforms? Why? Do you have a strategy in place? Have you been consistent? And last question, do you as a business owner face difficulties in monitoring your online conversations, like engaging with them, finding out where they are, all those great things. And let me know. Yes, I love that y'all went back and loved on this. That made my day. I've been avoiding adding the review option for fear that I won't be able to keep up. Okay. This is what I want us to think about. A way that you can help combat this is encourage. Remember, we went over encouraging feedback. Encourage your satisfied customers to leave reviews. Maybe reach out to some of them personally that have great, great experiences with you and respond to those promptly and professionally to get you in that practice. And then if you have negative reviews or reviews that you know how to respond to, use AI. And I'm gonna drop a blog in here as well. If I can kind of dance. Exactly, seize the need. I love this. Y'all, we're learning a lot today. Like, I'm glad y'all came. So build, we're in our third section. And again, think on those questions. If you have questions, put those in the question box right now. And we're going to usually the customers that leave a bad review are what I call the one percenter that is never happy. Always, always respond to them. So it does look as you care. I love this, but I also know Timothy that, that you do care. And that's what really matters. You're responding to show that you just care and you just want to make sure that, Hey, I hear you, but you're also not going to stand for this mess being on your pages. So I identify with that. No customer loyalty through meaningful experiences. Your customers are in control and this one off the page with your business and their experience starts with social media. I got you. I got you. This is, I'm going to actually send you our blog resources. Everyone. Please copy this, bookmark this. I use this on a daily basis. And this is our resources. This has everything you need to know from starting a brand to building your website, to taxes, to all that stuff. And we're actually in April. Be on the lookout, we're starting a 30 day business challenge. Even if you have a business, I strongly suggest you being a part of this challenge. The reason why I say this is because number one, it has steps that things that we all might be missing, claiming your pages, maybe your logo, maybe you need to retouch your brand, coming up with a brand identity, a brand persona. Um, yes, Rebecca, do not give me that canned response. I can go get my own cans from the grocery store. Uh-uh, we don't have time for that. <laughs> um, how to create a customer experience strategy. We're gonna be looking at these few things right here. Create a customer-centric culture, empower your employees, practice social listening, leverage technology, hello AI, and offer omnichannel support. Okay, so you're probably, you're probably like, okay, I know some of these, I got these, omnichannel support. What is that? This is where we're gonna provide consistent customer experiences across all touch points, from your social, to your website, to your email, to online, your website. But also I want us to ensure that each channel connects seamlessly. So little widgets that you see at the bottom of your website, your email has the widgets, everything is connected. Your website's working with your social, your social is working with your website, and that's all working with your email. If you have email, I'm not saying you need to, but these are things of making and tying out that customer experience to make it a well-rounded customer trip. And recognize the preference for digital 
and physical channels. So some of us have said, we do this in our store, we do this online. Know which place your customers are, and engage with them that way. Leveraging technology. Somebody asked a little bit earlier, I need a place where I can keep track of all my things, but they're a GoDaddy customer. Excuse me. GoDaddy has those tools, but also just making sure that we just look at them and we try to study them. I'm guilty of that. I work at GoDaddy and I have a website. I need to ensure that I'm using more of the tools that I have access to as a business owner for my website. Um, so leverage technology. I know AI is scary. A lot of this is scary, but I want us to at least try it and give it a chance. Just like when we were younger and they were like broccoli, vegetables, we had to try it. We're going to try this. We're going to give this a go. Practice social listening. You're probably thinking, Jeffrey, I plug my headphones into my computer, but I'm not hearing anything on social. That's not exactly what I'm talking about, okay? But social listening is really looking through your customer sentiments, your feedback, and learning how to respond to those, learning how to engage with those customers. And then empower your employees. If you have employees and you are not getting them pumped up every day, you're not recognizing them, you're not engaging with them online, you're doing it wrong empower your employees they are what make or break your community your um your atmosphere in your business whether that's online or in person it takes one employee to go online and say blah 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 blah, blah this is this ruined now you have to play catch up and you have to play on the defense side you have to engage with your customers and you also have to fight back with an employee and maybe talk bad about your business empower your employees make them a part of your business and create a customer-centric culture just really making sure that your number one focus is your customers and their experience with your products and your services, but also how your products and your services make them feel. Think about that at the end of the day. Like, how is everything about my customers and how can I make it more about my customers and my community without having to lose anything in the on the wayside? In our last section, you're probably thinking, dang, this went back quick, and it did. <laughs> Thank you so much. That means the world to me. Yes, um, Heather, you will get this video. And yes, Rebecca, we're uploading the second one. Um, we've had a little bit of difficulties. Let me actually guide you to our GoDaddy YouTube channel. If you don't, if you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, if you do not have our YouTube channel, I 100% encourage you all to bookmark this. Keep it in here as well. You'll also notice that we have GoDaddy courses. These are great SEO. Um, I think that was the second course. We have other ones about organizing your website. We have things about Aero in here. So please keep this on lock, bookmark this website, and come back to it when you need help, just like our resources page. We want to make sure that you're not just getting these webinars and these blogs and these videos, but you're constantly having a source of education. And I hope that this is good education for you all. And this is time well spent. Oh, yes, Rebecca. Okay. Rebecca just. Oh, yes. I love this. Y'all are making my day. No, and y'all just keep coming back. These are, that's what we host these webinars for. Yes, networking. Timothy, I love this. Leverage AI for your business. So conversational AI. <laughs> Someone had, had probably messaged me. I was like, I didn't know that could happen. Um, conversational AI. This is when we are talking with it. And by I mean that is like, number one, it's a better customer experience because providing this is going to be so helpful. So conversational AI tools, a technology that enables specific text or speech based AI tools like chatbots, virtual agents to understand, produce, and also learn human language to create human like interactions. So almost what a well, literally what AI is doing, but this is what your chatbots are doing. Um, I'm actually experimenting with putting chatbots on my website to help like when I'm out or I'm at work or something happens and they can direct them to the right spot where they're supposed to go. The reason why I like this and the reason why I personally use chatbots and I've had to use them whenever I've like gotten an order mixed up or my order has been delayed, it provides for a better customer experience. Yes, 
sometimes they do try to offer me a discount. And one time I just wanted my shoes. <laughs> so I got them for my dad for a present, but they ended up running out. And, but they were like, we can give you a discount. I'm like, no, I just want the shoes, but it's fine. But I'm just glad that like, y'all let me know the process of like how you decide what's in stock, what's not in stock. That was super helpful for me. I just needed that breakdown for clarity. Cause my dad was like, I thought you ordered these a while ago. And I'm like, I did. I promise I did. <laughs> I got you a present. I swear. <laughs> But it just also provides for a more efficient workflow. You're gone, you're sick, you're on vacation, you're doing your other business. This just provides for a more efficient workflow. It's able to make your business more productive, but can also handle routine FAQs or routine tasks. This is just really helping you free up time. So, and yes, you're probably thinking, but those are important questions. We all create FAQs on our socials and our websites. These are just those initial FAQs so that way you can suss out if someone really needs like human help or if they can get by with just a little technology help. Just depends. Improve accessibility. Voice AI tools, which are fun. I've been experimenting with them. Um, they can enhance accessibility. I've used them in some of the bigger stores when I've gone downtown Austin and just allowing customers to seamlessly interact with your brand without the need for typing. And yes, there's been people there on the floor and they've helped me, but they're like, hey, why don't we let you try this as well? It was just a cool experience. I was like, this is kind of cool. So, but it also helps you make better business decisions. A technology, including conversational AI, whether that's chatbots, or something on your voice activated, can just really help companies also analyze customer data, user data, which I love. And whenever I worked for another company and I worked in retail, we would actually do that. Like, and it was so much fun though. Like I have Amber coming in when she comes in, technology recognizes it. I get the most recent transactions that she's gotten. I get when her birthday colors, I know how to attune her shopping experience to her likes and dislikes. And that's actually very powerful, especially when you use it. It was funny. It happened to me and a few friends in a restaurant and they catered the menu. It was a off menu thing, but they catered it to our liking, but only that, they knew allergies, they knew all this stuff because we'd also inputted it before, but it was just a smoother ride for the dinner and everyone that was involved. What is the business impact of conversational AI? And we use chatbots um, at GoDaddy, but like I said, a better customer experience, a more efficient workflow, help make better business decisions. But I love this part is that you can have that competitive gain. And I think and I know sometimes we are scared, but I know by experimenting with technology, by engaging with it, asking it questions, making technology work for us and not against us is how we're gonna be moving with AI and with these chatbots and with our businesses to make our business a well-oiled machine, but also have customer service when maybe we don't have any employees, maybe we're a one person band. So think about it that way as well as it's not taking away a job, but maybe it's in helping enlist a job for someone that can't really hire someone at that time. So we always need to think about those sides of things too, and how we can use it and not abuse it. I think that's a really powerful thing is using AI in the right way and the right capacity for our business, our community. Okay. I do recommend, sorry, Timothy, I'm just seeing your question. I do recommend chat GPT. I do. Um, and and if you haven't, like, go online, look up what GoDaddy Arrow is doing, but ChatGPT is going to help you. Like, if you have questions, if you need to answer things, ChatGPT is your thing. Hey, China. <laughs> yes. And four practical examples of conversational AI. FAQs and personalized customer service. Yeah, let me link you right here. Putting this all in the chat. If you want more information about GoDaddy Arrow, as our latest AI product to help you build your website logo, product descriptions, um, and help you overall like reach online um, as a business. So check it out, bookmark it, come back to it. Um, but these are some practical, great examples of conversational AI, whether it's strong data collection and customer insights, which I love. Get to know your consumers on a deeper level, but don't creep on them. That's weird. Selling directly to consumers. D to C. 
Yes, it is. It's the one and the two. If you're fine, you were not way off. I know. It was something that we all talked about at work. We're like, people are going to think it's Arrow, but it's Arrow. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you're okay, Tony. And then empowering customer self-service. Um, when your customers feel part of the brand, they're going to want to stay with the brand. And that's big. Um, I have a few favorite brands that I love, but one of my favorite skincare brands, they actually invited me into a Slack chat. And I got to um, get like new products that were going to be revealed. I'm going to chat with the owner, the CEO. It was I was like, this is so cool. And I still buy their products. I still use their products every single morning and night. A female and black owned business. And typical obstacles encountered with conversational AI. It's efficient training. That's the number one thing. Oh, we can use this. It's easy. How many of us knew that there was a way to prompt AI? Or we're just learning about this right now. We're like, oh, that's how we talk to AI. I didn't know at first when I first started or this came on, on the market. So that's something that we have to educate ourselves about. Data privacy concerns. I know China's heard this a few times as she's attended our office hours and also some of our webinars. Do not put personal information into anything AI. It is learning. So if you go in and put, this is my address, how much I make a year, it's going to know all that about you. Don't do it. Also, ever-evolving human language. AI is different. We're not accustomed to it. It's going to take some getting used to. Don't don't grow out of that stage of where we're too big for learning. We're never too big for learning. Try to learn something new every day, even if it's a person's name. Exactly. Knowing that you're instructing it and not talking to it like it's a human was a game changer. Exactly. And user user apprehension. We're scared. Sometimes we're just like, I don't know what I'm doing. But when you come to webinars like these, when you study the blogs, when you look at the courses on your YouTube channel from GoDaddy, you're studying, you're taking time to make your business better, but also you a better business owner. And that's at the end of the day what we can all ask for, but also just be a better human. Hope we're all doing that as well. And again, y'all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, oh, Tony, you are perfect in every single way. Like you are doing great. Um, to recap, we went over how to implement customer retention strategies big 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 thing in the beginning also learn about how manage online reviews and leverage that feedback last but not least we talked about building customer loyalty meaningful experiences and then we went over just leveraging ai for personalized customer interactions i know we're tight on time we have two minutes i didn't think we were going to go up to the time to be honest with you but i want to say a huge huge thank you to all of you that attended this webinar today hope you've walked away learning something hope you've walked away feeling encouraged and empowered as well. And I invite you to join our GoDaddy LinkedIn small business group and say it on, actually, if I'm going to put that in chat. That's not what I ordered. Y'all bear with me. I'm trying to get y'all the link so y'all can join our GoDaddy community small business group. Please join. Um, it's a great group to be involved in and it's a great support network too. Um, we have in GoDaddy employees in there. Oh, thank you. Uh, China, they're on YouTube. So all of our videos are on YouTube. I'm going to link y'all again to our YouTube channel. Bookmark this, save it, send it to your friends, send it to your coworkers. Send it to your other business owner friends. This is where you go to get educated. This is where you go to get information. Again, thank you all. Y'all have been the greatest. Just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that attended, that engaged, that asked questions, that just showed up today. You took a step at being a better business owner, but also learning your customers and engaging with them more. And I know I appreciate that. I know they also appreciate it. So thank you. Hope you have a great Thursday, wherever you are, whether that's morning, afternoon or night, or maybe it's Friday where you are, but I hope you've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed our time together and we'll see you next time. Same place, different topic. Thanks everyone. I know China, I'm going to feel better too.